there seems to be always a new lightweight high energy density battery from the lab. Evidently, this typically does not translate into a marketable product which benefits the consumer. Economies of scale, materials cost, and lifespan inhibit many new types of batteries. As a result, it is very tricky to come up with a new battery which has excellent performance, but is marketable as well. However, there is a notable shift happening right now, and there are parallel developments towards the iconic solid state which can have up to multiple times the energy density of lithium ion, meaning that future electric cars could travel up to 1500 miles without charging. Traditional lithium ion utilizes liquid electrolytes, with separators that keep positive and negative electrodes apart. Solid state is pretty much what it sounds like, and it utilizes a thin layer of solid electrolytes which carry lithium ions between electrodes. In turn, it's all about mastering the material structure, so ions can transfer efficiently through. However, nothing in the world is for free, and there are still some drawbacks to SSBs. And you can say that this has a similar problem to the semiconductor industry, where the silicon chip is a very well known fabrication process, but there are other technologies such as photonics which could eventually replace silicon, it's just that the manufacturing is not known yet. So it could be very expensive to build these alternative chips. The same kind of point can be made about SSBs, where we have to figure out how to manufacture these batteries at a large scale. There's also the problem of figuring out what is the best material for the perfect solid electrolyte. The perfect material would have to be very conductive, but it also cannot degrade over time. As of right now, there's a lot of research focused on increasing the amount of cycles or lifespan of the SSB. Big car companies also realize that solid state is probably the future of battery technology. Nissan is working on the next generation with the company transitioning away from ICE vehicles. The company is investing over $15 billion towards development, with the belief that a solid state can be built with cheaper materials bringing costs down to $0.75 cents per kilowatt hour by 2028, maybe even lowering the cost to be competitive with ICE vehicles. In the meantime, Toyota is already making solid state prototype cars. There's quite a bit of speculation on what the company is really working on and how advanced these batteries are. But what we do know is that Toyota is ahead of the game with over 1300 patents with research dating back to the 1990s. The company is also investing 35 billion into electric vehicles. So companies do know that batteries are the pivotal point when it comes to electric vehicles. And it is imperative to make something that has a higher energy density than lithium ion. There are a couple of specific battery companies which are working towards their own solid state version as well. Polo GM is one of the front runners, with their huge 2 gigawatt hour factory scheduled for 2023. And their new battery is going to offer 485 watt hours per liter, with a 12 minute fast charging time. It does have a drawback at around 1000 cycles, but the company plans on improving the design over the next couple of years. There is also the Lighten battery, which is a 900 watt hour per kilogram lithium sulfur battery, and they're basing this claim on a 3D graphene lithium sulfur architecture called sulfur caging. Their prototype has endured over 1400 cycles, with a real product expected by 2025. But how much will this cost is still unknown, and once again we have to be really skeptical of these kind of claims until they come up with a real product. However, material composition is very important, and how you join these materials together are very critical in a solid state battery. In turn, additive manufacturing may be the key to unlocking next generation technology. If you can speed this process up with multi-material capability, then you are unlocking many possibilities, because you can construct objects such as SSBs with custom profiles. Saku is currently developing lithium metal batteries, with their AM platform, which combines a binder jet with a powder bed. This 3D printing process is able to combine ceramics and metals in the same layer with a high degree of accuracy. Their Swift print variant can achieve 800 watt hours per liter with around 800 cycles. It is also non flammable and non toxic. They target an energy density of around 1200 by 2024. And if everything pans out, this could be a game changer because it is 50% smaller than lithium ion with over triple densities. 3D printing also allows for custom profiles, so it can be used in anything from phones to electric bikes. 
Ultimately, the future battery is looking like it will be a 3D printed, precisely controlled solid state. A while back, I made a very wild prediction stating that the solid capacitor will eventually replace the battery. I don't think that's going to happen, but there are still some really interesting applications for ultra capacitors. The downside is, is that they do not have adequate energy densities, but their upside is that they can have over 1 million cycles, so they are very durable. Rather than a chemical process, capacitors store their energy in an electric field, so they have very high efficiency. Skeleton Technologies has made a capacitor out of curved graphene, which is basically crumpled up graphene sheets, and thank goodness that we are finally using graphene. They have achieved only 65 watt hours per kilogram, so this kind of falls short of lithium ion, but it has 50,000 cycles, which is over 10 times the lifespan. I'm sure they'll make that average a little bit higher to a comparable capacitor. But for now, this can be used in a lot of applications, including regenerative braking. So it's a very exciting development, even though it might not replace solid state in the end. As of right now, it kind of looks like the solid state is starting to make its first steps into the market. However, there are many questions remaining especially for the EV world. And that leads into a lot of different problems associated with the grid dependence along with capital costs in getting equipment to charge your vehicle. We also know that inflation is going through the roof and electricity is only getting more expensive. So there's definitely a capital problem for the average consumer here. And in my opinion, I just don't think the EV revolution is just there yet, even with the emergence of solid state batteries. Once again, this is highly tied into discovering a new energy source which is dependable and has a high power density. Nuclear fusion could be the answer to this problem, but we also have to diversify into multiple methods and figure out which way is going to work to make this nuclear fusion process a viable solution. But I would like to know what you think about all this, so please leave a comment. Like the video if you enjoyed it and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.